Hey SB fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Stick and Butter Gal. I hope you guys are having a beautiful me fuel day. I am currently in the best mood. I am having such an amazing day. I'm gonna tell you guys about it soon, but first, how are you guys doing? How's your progress and goals going? I've noticed so many comments in my previous videos of just recent victories and how amazing you guys are doing on carnivore and how much you guys are loving this way of eating. But I've also noticed a lot of comments of you guys expressing how difficult carnivore is, how much of a struggle it is to stick with this way of eating, especially during the holidays. And I'm here to tell you, you are not alone. It is absolutely okay and normal. That's why I spent most of my time and energy and passion into hosting my monthly 30 day carnivore challenges. So for those who are new here, I wanted to announce that my next challenge, the January 30 day carnivore challenge, January, 2022, is now open for sign up, and I just sealed the deal for the guest speakers of January. So the guests are going to be Dr. Sean Baker, Kelly Hogan, and Coach Adek. And for those who are part of the Steak and Butter Gang, uh, you guys know how fantastic and amazing Coach Adek is. So the fact that she has agreed to be a guest speaker as well just makes the January challenge that much more exciting. Every month during these challenges, the members who sign up have automatic access to eight hours every single week of live Zoom calls. It's for me and my team of carnivore coaches to answer all of your burning questions about carnivore diet, about weight loss, about hormone healing, pretty much anything that you want to ask regarding carnivore health, fitness, weight loss, fasting, we take the time to answer it for you guys. Throughout the week, we have different calls uh, focused on different topics and specializations. So Tuesdays is a day of just community, connecting, bonding, uh, cheering each other on. The coaches are there to answer all of your questions as well, always. Uh, Friday, we focus on weight loss, and this is led by Coach Steven. So Coach Steven will be leading the weight loss meetings as as well as the carnivore health and fitness meetings where he answers all of your questions regarding whatever struggles, health concerns you are having, how to understand and read lab work and blood tests numbers as a carnivore and all fitness related questions. And then we have feasting and fasting classes hosted by coach Raymond Nazon and Emily Harvo. Emily, I actually featured in my last video, so definitely check it out if you wanna get to know her, but they are the dynamic duo of the year and they teach these feasting and fasting classes every Sunday evening. Evening. And of course, you guys will have access to all guest speaker meetings, and that includes Dr. Sean Baker's, Kelly Hogan's, and Coach Adek's guest speaker meeting. So the January 30 day challenge sign up link is down below. If you have any questions, just DM me on Instagram or email me. Let's get into the updates. So the past month, I did something quite different. I switched it up. I stopped eating beef altogether and lamb. So zero red meat the past month, but I ate chicken for the past month every day, 30 days, Every single day I ate chicken. I'm gonna talk about how I feel, what changes I've noticed, all of it. And I also have a bunch of questions from you guys. I always collect your questions on Instagram through my stories so that I make sure I cover everything when it comes to these types of update videos. I stopped eating all beef and all lamb because of a sudden beef aversion. But because of that beef aversion, beef, ribeyes, or any type of beef just made me feel nauseated. So what I did instead was I ate other meats that were available. I would say 85 to 90% of the meat that I ate was chicken, specifically chicken party wings and chicken drumettes. It was the fattiest chicken that I could get easily, conveniently, and on a budget. Besides that, I also had pork belly, pork loin chops, raw salmon, raw scallops, and eggs specifically egg pudding. So first question is from Meet Me Up. Do you have to eat more in portion when eating chicken compared to beef? When I sit down, I tend to eat about three to four pounds of ribeyes. And now the past month on chicken, I need about four pounds, at least four pounds of chicken. And again, the chicken that I eat, there's bones in that chicken. The party wings and the drumettes are bone in. So if you cut out the bones, I would say it's like three and a half pounds of meat, so it really does equal out to be about the same. Now, the only difference is when I was eating the ribeyes, you know, meal after meal after meal, I would always be so satiated, satisfied, just content. And I knew it was because of the nutrient dense high amount 
of fat in ribeyes. Now with the chicken wings and dramats, yes, the chicken skin is quite fatty, but the meat itself is very lean. So I noticed a trend this past month. After three or four days of eating just the chicken meals, I would start craving for something more fatty. You guys all know that I thrive best on a very high fat carnivore way of eating. So that makes sense to me that three to four days consecutively of these chicken wings and chicken dramats, I would still be craving and needing for more fat, which is why I started adding in pork belly. Now pork belly is extremely fatty and one one can actually go a little too far if they just eat pork belly alone. So that's why I would add pork belly as a complement to my chicken meals during the days where I wanted and craved more fat. Portion wise, it pretty much is the same. Now, if you guys wanna go calculate the calories and macros, you go do that. I don't waste my time or energy carrying or calculating numbers. So here's some footage of the actual meats. The chicken I always get from Whole Foods and they are $5.49 per pound for both of the cuts. And for the pork belly, also from Whole Foods, it's about $6.49 for the pork belly. And I cook the chicken in the oven at 400, sometimes 380 to 400 degrees for 45 minutes, sometimes 50 minutes. And if I want more fat, I will always have a side of some pork belly. And the pork belly, I also just cook in the oven or I air fry it. And now that I'm home for the holidays, I wanted to share what I always bring back to my family. And it's these Element electrolytes. So Element has, I believe, nine different flavors. One of them being raw, unflavored, zero stevia, zero flavoring. You can get a free sample pack just by typing in the URL on the screen or clicking the link in the description box. So Element Electrolytes have zero sugar, zero gluten, zero fillers, absolutely zero artificial ingredients. I usually just make it for my siblings, ice water, mix it up and serve. Electrolytes are great, especially if you're new to low carb carnivore, ketovore, because it helps keep the energy up and lessen the harshness of the adaptation symptoms. Again, if you guys want to get a free sample pack, check out the link in the description box. Who's your doodle asks, how did you stay full on chicken and do you have any indigestion? I can stay full for 24 hours on the chicken meals that I ate um, because I specifically and purposely chose the fattiest cut of chicken. Chicken with skin on, I think is as fatty as you can get. When I eat, I usually eat in OMADS, which stands for one meal a day. So I usually eat one meal a day and I did zero fasts beyond 24 hours this past month. And I did that on purpose as well because I didn't want the euphoria or the benefits of fasting to mess up my evaluation and data on how I feel on chicken. After three years of eating meat, it was my first time having chicken, okay? So obviously my digestion needed some time to get used to this new meat. So I had a little bit more gas. It wasn't anything extreme and the gas was not smelly at all. My stools remained the same. I didn't have diarrhea or constipation at all, but I did notice a feeling that my digestion wasn't as pristine as it was when I was eating beef. But then later on in the month, when my body adjusted to digesting the chicken as fuel, I actually noticed that I felt lighter after eating my meals um, on chicken than I did on beef. So maybe it's because chicken is just leaner. Uh, maybe it's because ribeyes are just so dense and so fatty, but I really liked how I felt after eating a meal of just chicken versus a whole meal of fatty beef. Next question is from New Yorka. Hi, New Yorka. Since chicken is inflammatory, did you feel any changes in your body? Okay. so. For those who are new to carnivore, in the carnivore community at least, chicken kind of has a bad rap as being more inflammatory because of their omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. It's not as ideal as the ratio of beef and lamb. So when the omega-6 is a little higher, it can be more inflammatory for people who consume this meat. And that's why a lot of people cannot tolerate chicken, they cannot tolerate meats besides beef and lamb. But I really, really feel like I healed so much within my eight months of eating nothing but beef that I can now tolerate foods like chicken. I actually have a whole list in front of me of my observations, what changes I've noticed. So when I look here, I'm looking at my very detailed list. So the first thing is I noticed that I was a lot thirstier actually. I drank a lot more water these past 30 days. And here are the reasons why I think that is. Firstly, chicken, the taste itself is 
very salty, very salty. And I think it's because of the flavor that comes out of the chicken skin when it's cooked. And also the fat that oozes out of the chicken drums and the chicken party wings, it congeals into basically like a chicken jello. And that is probably the saltiest part of the chicken. So I'm guessing the electrolyte and mineral balance is higher in the sodium. Whatever it is, it's not the same as beef, which causes me to want more water. So I drink a lot more water. And when I drink more water, I pee a lot more. So I found I went to the bathroom to pee a lot more this past month. So these are all observations. The next thing I'm going to touch on everything to do with inflammation. So I noticed that my eyes were drier and my eyes are driest when I open my eyes and wake up first thing in the morning. I remember after one of my eye checkups, my doctor told me that she could literally see dry flakes in my eyes. Um, that's how dry my eyes were. So I've always struggled with extremely dry eyes. When I went carnivore, the dryness in my eyes have only improved. And I have to say when I was beef only, it was at its best, at its most moisturized I've ever felt in my life. And on chicken, I do notice a noticeable difference in how moisturized my eyes are. The skin never broke out once, which is awesome, okay? So uh, I did not have any cystic acne, any bumps, any pimples, any blemishes at all. Also, my eczema did not flare up. My psoriasis did not flare up. However, I did notice that my skin moisture was also a little bit drier than usual. Next thing is puffiness. So after eating a huge meal of chicken, I definitely noticed that when I wake up the next morning, my eyes are puffier than usual. In fact, my whole face is puffier than usual. I understand that it's normal to be uh, a little puffier than usual in the morning. And if you give it a few hours, that puffiness from the face and the eyes usually drains out. But I did notice a noticeable difference in puffiness when I woke up on chicken versus beef. Okay, next thing that I have listed, ah, yes, this one is probably the biggest con, lower back pain. And this is something that all of my pianist colleagues complain about, so I know that I'm not alone, but lower back pain is a very common thing, especially for those who have to sit at work. So again, when I was on beef only, I actually was able to minimize my back pain so greatly that it was just barely there. And then when I started adding fasting, um, learning from Coach Raymond from his feasting and fasting classes throughout the summer and applying his feasting and fasting protocol to my beef only, oh my gosh, my, my lower back pain, I kid you not, was gone completely. I could sit in front of a computer or a piano for like five hours straight or more. And at the end of the day, zero back pain. Like my whole body was just loose and flexible and not stressed and tight. And it's so interesting that when I'm eating chicken this past month, bam, the lower back pain is back. So it's not to the point where it's debilitating or I actually notice 24 seven, but it's like, ooh, feels kind of tight and sour and achy. So the pain, is obviously caused by the inflammation that I felt from eating chicken. But the fact that I have to be more proactive to prevent and minimize my lower back pain, it's really not ideal. I obviously eat the carnivore way because it makes me feel my best. So these observations I hope are helpful to you guys in deciding whether or not you want to incorporate more or less chicken to your diet. Next observation, the nose the congestion. For as long as I remember, everywhere I go, I would be carrying Kleenex tissues and I would always be blowing my nose. It's this continuous congestion in my nose. And anytime I notice the congestion is better, I know for a fact that something is working with what I'm eating. And during my beef only phase, zero congestion. Even during the summer months where allergy season was at its peak, my nose was so crystal clear. I didn't have to blow my nose at all. Now, this past month of eating chicken, the congestion is back. Not as full blown as before carnivore, obviously, but it's definitely back where I have to touch up my nose quite often. I have to bring Kleenex whenever I go out in case I have to blow my nose. Maybe it's also because it's a lot colder. It's such a noticeable difference from eating beef to chicken that I know for a fact that the chicken is congesting my nose and causing my nose is back to being runny. Next question is, did you feel any different on chicken versus beef? Now I'm gonna use this question to take a moment to talk about my energy and uh, my mood, which is a huge thing for me as well. So I know the past observations I've shared have mostly been 
cons, but here is where I can really share a lot of good things that I've noticed after eating chicken for a month. I have to first preface by sharing that after I had Dr. Rimka on my channel, she mentioned how A-type personalities, how uh, very driven and ambitious people are usually low methylators. And she said that these type of people can benefit greatly from more glycine in their diet. And I remember scrolling through Dr. Rimka's feed on Instagram and seeing one of her posts of foods to eat that is carnivore that can provide more glycine. And can you guess which food was on that list? Chicken drumsticks and wings because the chicken skin has a lot of glycine. So that's also another reason why I was so excited to try this 30 day experiment of chicken, just to see if it can affect my mindset and my mood. So one common thing among A-type personalities is that we work so hard that we often forget to take the time to relax, to de-stress, to recover. And when we don't do that, we tend to burn out. And I noticed that this past month, I was much more mindful of taking breaks, of spending time with loved ones, of boosting my oxytocin for the day by cuddling with my dogs, by bonding with my boyfriend, by spending more time catching up with my friends. I feel like this really made a difference in my mental health. I just felt a lot more calm, uh, less anxious, and in the moment this past month, and I have to say it's because of the glycine in the chicken skin. So that is probably the most fascinating thing that I have felt and noticed this past month. When I ate all of that chicken, I definitely felt like I took more time to myself. I slowed down my pace. I stopped being stuck in that perpetual go, go, go mode. And I allowed myself to just recover. There's no better way to be in this mindset, this mood to just want to relax and bond and make good memories and just be in the present than during the holidays. And I honestly think it's because I started eating chicken that I I planned this trip here to Los Angeles to be with my siblings, my family, and eating all this chicken and glycine, I honestly think is the catalyst to these actions. So I'm really, really happy about that observation. Did I notice any changes to my body? So firstly, I did not weigh myself. I don't use the scale. I have not been using the scale for years now. And it's because I know for a fact that that number on the scale does not mean anything to my body composition. Now, body recomposition, I have noticed in this past month, but I cannot pinpoint um, that it is because I've been eating chicken or whether or not it's because I have been eating OMADs every day and not doing any fasting. I've noticed that my waistline, my stomach area is still the same. I don't see that I've gained any fat or water weight in the areas that I would prefer to stay the same. And that's my waist, legs, arms, face. But I have noticed some positive changes to my female parts. In other words, my boobs and my booty. And it's really nice. I feel like I fill out my clothes more in those areas and my clothes are usually very stretchy. Like I love wearing sweatpants or yoga pants or stretchy tank tops and shirts. So I can't really use clothes as a marker, um, but I definitely feel like I did not gain fat. My body recomposition is continuing to improve, including this area right here. And the last question is, am I going to go back to beef only? So this is something that I am still pondering, still deciding on. I definitely want to open up the January challenge with a personal challenge for myself. I still don't know what I want to do, but I know for a fact that I want to start doing more fasting. I'm going to be attending all of Raymond's feasting and fasting classes, and he is going to continue to give out schedules for the members who attend. So I plan to follow his schedules starting in the new year, and I feel like that's going to really help um, kick off my year to a great start, boost that mental clarity, boost that good mood and energy. Even though I've noticed more inflammation in many many areas from eating so much chicken this past month there has also been a silver lining to this experience and that is realizing that eating chicken or foods that are high in glycine can really help 
with my mood, my mindfulness, my A-type personality to just unwind, slow down, and just relax and recover. And I've definitely felt that extra hard this past month thanks to eating all of this chicken. So this is why I'm such a huge fan of experimenting now. I know what works for me. I know what foods I love and feel good on, but I'm always excited for my next challenge, my next experiment. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I really hope that I'll get to meet you guys in the January 30 day carnivore challenge. It's where I spend a majority of my time, my creativity and my energy is in these challenges, hosting these amazing meetings with you guys the carnivores of the community who sign up so if you're hesitating on whether or not to join don't hesitate just give it a go and i'm pretty positive that you will not be disappointed it's just such an awesome experience all links to the january challenge is down below you'll have access to all guest speaker meetings all community meetings everything thanks for watching guys don't forget to hit like subscribe and turn on the bell and notifications i'll see you guys in the next video